Today I will go over all the mythic cards in a much more condensed version than my other version which is over an hour long. Now if you are a new player you probably want to go check out the one hour version because it does cover every single card. This version will only be to highlight the cards that you should craft if you're after top tier decks. Now before we get started I just want to make a small disclaimer and that is make sure to check the date when this video was released so the information is actually you know kind of fresh. If you're watching this video four months from now then this video is not going to be accurate at all because we're going to have a new set etc etc. And if the video is out of date I probably have a updated version on my channel so make sure to check that out. Alright let's get going and let's try to do this under 10 minutes. So let's start with History of Manalia. You're gonna need 4 copies and this is gonna be in either mono white or in white slash blue. The next card is gonna be Ajani Adversary of Tyrants. You're gonna need 2 to 3 copies and it's gonna be in the same deck that you play History of Banalia in. The card is very strong. The next card is gonna be Lura Dawnbringer. You are gonna need 2 of her and she mainly goes into control decks although you can do some funky stuff with angels. Now I have seen a single copy of JST Cunning Castaway in certain mono blue decks but I never seen it work, I just want to put it out there. The next card is gonna be, where are you? Well Nexus of Fate is currently banned in best of ones in MTG Arena but you can still use it in best of threes in MTG Arena. However, the card is, uh, if you're going to craft it, you're going to need four copies, but please don't because everyone will hate you to the end of time. The next card is going to be Spawn of Mayhem. If you're going to use this card, you're going to need a full playset of four, and this is either going to be in Mono Black or in a Rakdos, Red and Black. The next card is Twilight Prophet, or you're going to need a single copy of this, and it goes into certain sideboards and in certain black slash red setups. However, I do believe you do get a single copy of this in one of your starter packs, but I cannot be quite sure. The next card I want to talk about is going to be, where are you? If I can find you, there you are. It's going to be Arc Like Phoenix. If you're going to make Arc Like Phoenix, you are going to need a full playset, and obviously this goes into Phoenix decks, and once we get the extended standard, whatever they're going to call it, in MTG Arena, you are gonna need this card because it's so strong. It sees place in Legacy, let's put it that way. That is why it's always gonna be a very strong card. The next card is gonna be Rekindling Phoenix and you're gonna need between two and four copies of the Rekindling Phoenix. Two is mainly for some wacky control decks and for some aggro decks, but if you're going with a either a red, black, or a red green deck you usually see four phoenixes in those. Anyway let's move on to the next card and it's gonna be the Hellkite. You are gonna need four copies of this and it goes into the green red ramp decks. Obviously the card is actually really good. Let's move on to the next card and it's gonna be the Ooze. Now as of this recording I'm not quite certain about the number I want to recommend. I've seen as many as four being played but I've certainly seen two work as well in Nexus of Fate Bessel 3 decks. The card is very good but as of this recording I would recommend crafting only two to three. Anyway let's move on to Vivian Reed and you're gonna need at least two Vivian Reeds for most decks that include a Vivian Reed although a third copy is not bad but you can make do with two but I think I would prefer seeing three. Now the next card I want to talk about is the Carnage Tyrant. Sad that this guy is kind of completely fading out as of this recording from all the Sultai decks but you still see him popping up but as of this recording I can't really recommend you crafting him. You don't need him anymore but if you are going to go ahead and craft him you're going to need at least two and probably not more than three. Let's move on. And Dovin the Grand Arbiter has seen play but he has not yet found a proper deck so as of this recording I cannot recommend him. Now when it comes to Teferi here of Dominaria you are gonna need at least three for control decks but four is now actually being played but you can certainly make it work with three. Let's move on to the next page and talk a little bit about the Usurper. As of this recording, this card is increasing in value and people are playing it more. Therefore, saying a number is kind of hard. But I could probably recommend right now 
that you should own at least a single copy of her, but in the future I am gonna predict that you're gonna see as many as three in a deck. Let's move on to the Serpent of Scales. As of this recording, this has only seen play once, but when it saw play it was a 4 off. The card is still good, but I can't really recommend you crafting it right now, but I am expecting in the future that this will be a staple card that you are gonna need like a full playset in order to make it work, but right now I cannot recommend it. Next up we have Ral, and this one is a bit questionable. This card saw a lot of play before the latest expansion, but because we now have 12 drakes in standard, Ral kinda fizzled out, but he's still a good card and you can safely own 1-2 to two copies and you can certainly make him work. Let's move on and we're gonna move on to the next page. Here we're gonna find Raska, Gugarian Queen. This card is still good, but I would not recommend owning more than two copies of her, but she's probably gonna rise in value once the rotation occurs, although that is still quite a long way to go. The second version of Raska is gonna be the Relic Seeker, and this card is still being played, but you only need a single copy of her to make her work, and she's not required to actually make decks. Now the next card is gonna be Chaosbringer, the card is starting to see some play, and in the future is certainly gonna be a standard card, but as of, as of right now, I cannot recommend you owning more than two copies of him, but you'll probably not be unhappy with owning him in the future, but as I said, two copies for now will do. The Ravenger Worm, as of now, is not a card that is being played, but again, once the rotation occurs, I'm expecting to see this guy, but I cannot recommend him right now. Let's move on. Aurelia, example of justice, was played before, but has completely vanished from, well, every single deck everywhere. The deck is nowhere to be found, so I can't recommend crafting it right now. The same thing can be said about the Dryad. The token deck completely vanished once the new set came, mainly because we now have a board clear at 4 mana cost, so the token plan is like completely dead, so I cannot recommend you crafting this card if you want to be competitive. The card still works, but for competitive decks, this deck completely vanished, so you can no longer really rely upon it. The same can be said about March of the Multitude. Again, the token deck completely vanished once we got a board sweep at 4 mana once again. Now the Merfolk Lord, you can still own this card if you want to make a Merfolk deck and you can actually make Merfolks work in MTG Arena. However, it's not tier 1 deck, but I can still recommend the card as a 2-3 to three of in Merfolk decks. Let's move on to the next card, which is going to be Hydroid Crisis. This card is the most amazing card in standard, the most amazing card printed for in a long while. I mean, Arc Light Phoenix is a amazing card, but Hydrocrasis is on another level. Every single player in NTG Arena should own all four copies of Hydrocrasis. The card is just that good. It works in pretty much any deck that has those colors. And any deck that doesn't have those colors, wish they could actually include Hydrocrasis. Go now and craft four copies if you don't own it, unless you're never gonna play these colors, of course. Let's move on to the Mutable. You need a single copy of this in certain version of control decks, but it's not required. So yeah, a single copy, but you don't you're not required to spend it if you're not inclined to. Let's move on to the next page, and on this page I only want to talk about Karn. As of this recording, Karn is kinda not seen anywhere in standard, but the card is still good. You're probably gonna need this card if you're gonna play in the MTG Arena's uh, extended format, whatever it's gonna be called, but right now I can't recommend you crafting this for any tier 1 deck, but the card is not bad, so I can still recommend it like a card that you should own, but you know, if you're making tier 1 decks you don't need this card, but for the future you certainly do need this card, and in that case you want at least 2 copies, but 3 copies will not be a mistake to own. That sentence got all screwed up. Anyway, let's move on to the last page, and here we're gonna talk about Immortal Sun. Now this card still sees play, it's not very common, but the card is still good. If you're gonna craft this card, you only need a single copy, but I have seen as many as two copies. And that concludes this video. 
In case you missed any of the cards, I will leave all the cards I recommend and the number in the comment section down below, so check that out in case you actually missed something. I'm sorry about speaking this fast, but you know, I tried to make this video as short as possible. And in case you actually do want to watch the more in-depth version, where I talk a lot slower, there's always the longer one hour version that I also have a link to down below. Anyway, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. This is Project signing out.